thank you very much. Thank you, Rajat, for inviting me here. Um, I did give a big talk last night on the conclave, but this is my favorite subject, so I'm looking forward to this talk even more. Um, so the topic I'm going to talk about is just how endurance exercise actually extends your lifespan and health span, which disagrees with everything a lot of people have heard before. A lot of people think that all this endurance running and stuff like that is actually shortening our lifespan. And what I want to show you is that actually that's not true. But I want to start off with the fact that I've run a lot of races. Uh, I've run across you know, Death Valley in California, Puget Band water race. I've run in Western states. I've done races all over the country and other countries too. But there's one race that really stands out to me, and that's College of the High. I, just an amazing, fantastic race, and it's, it's magical in my opinion. And I just, I'm just amazed that more people don't do it than I. Me and my wife both just, just can't wait to come back and do this again. And it's also the toughest race. There's, there's only one race that I can think of that's tougher, and that's a race called the Barkley, which is a 100-mile race. And in the 35 years that the race has existed, only 10 people have ever finished it. Okay, I've tried it three times, and I made it eight miles the first time, eight miles the second time, and 20 miles the third time. But this is the second hardest, and it's pretty tough. Okay, so it's, uh, of course, you know, 5,500 meters and 300 kilometers, well, 333 kilometers. I did a 222 kilometer one, nonstop. And I showed this last night when I spoke at the conference. And I announced the project as the world's leading expert on endurance racing. And I believe that. Okay, so the model is failing is not a crime, but lack of effort is. And I think that's very appropriate for this race. That's my, me and my wife, Molly Sheridan, a lot of you, I guess, anybody here not know her? Oh, you know, okay, so you have my mom. So be, I got a treat for you, yeah. Okay, this is, of course, this is the very first team, people that, that actually ran the race. This is Mark Cobain, me, my wife, Molly, and of course, Rajet, the race director. We were the big four. Okay, this was this history being made, where people saying it was impossible to do. And as you know, okay, we, and we, we did have the saying, whoever doesn't end up in the hospital wins. And let's say, she was first in the hospital, but then she got back on the course. Then I was in the hospital, and I didn't get back on the course. And then when she found out I was in the hospital, she pulled from the race. And he never got in the hospital, so he finished and won the race. And that, that was an event of all time. But that just made a... What happened that day? This guy here? <laughs> but you know, it's as much as all the trouble and pain and stuff that it was it was the most rewarding experience of our time. And of course, Molly came back next year and finished the race, and I came back the year after that and finished the race. So we are finishers now. So all three of us here are people that finish the race. And as you know, they've made a movie about it. It's the poster right there. And I want to point out one very important thing that a lot of people don't realize. It's not about the runners. It's about making the toughest race on earth. Not about running the race. It's making it. Rajet is the star of this thing. This is a movie about Rajet. And he doesn't get all the credit because, of course, he's also the executive producer. And he doesn't want to make everybody think that he is the best. So, so far you've only missed a fun, <laughs> fun introduction. I haven't gotten into any of the real important stuff yet, but just talking about what a great race to ultra the high is. Um, but let me introduce myself. My, my business, my whole field of research is anti-aging. Okay. I study the kind of things that can help us make, keep us young and healthy as long as possible and the best possible. That's what my business is. I've been, whole business. I've been in biotech for many, many years. I've got a lot of things going on here. Um, and I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on there. I just want to also show that if you know anything about biotech, you know that these are like the biggest things ever in the field of biotech discoveries that are made. And I was actually part of every single one of them. So I, I have, actually have a very big history of biotech research. But again, it's a life 
lifetime commitment to anti-aging science. That's all I'm focused on. There's a lot of theories on why we age. You've heard most of them before. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that you know I'm working on the theory for aging, but there are other theories. And I'm gonna you know skip ahead right now and tell you that all these other theories are not true. Okay, when you'll see what I've, what I've got here. All of them have turned into things that we all have read about. People are trying to get us to buy all these different things, or trying to buy us into the idea of doing caloric restriction or different types of lifestyles to better our lives. And they, they say that we're going to get younger as a result of this. And, and <clears throat> bottom line is that there's a lot of these things, but I like to think of each of these as like a stick of dynamite that's burning inside of ourselves. We've got all these theories on why we age. And we could just say, that, well, they're all true. We have all these different mechanisms of aging going on. But each one's like a stick of dynamite that's burning inside ourselves. But what's really important is which one has the shortest fuse. Because we've got all these theories, but if, if one of them's got a fuse that's really long, we don't have to worry about that cause of aging. Because the other cause of aging is going to kill us all first. Okay, now, if we can find a way to put out that shortest fuse, then these other ones become important. And that's, and so there's, thank God, other people are working on some of these other things. But what we have found in our research, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over the data just to get to the punchline here, is that humans and mice have different types of sticks of dynamite. Okay, so we have like this particular stick of dynamite with the shortest fuse, but they have that one with the shortest fuse. Actually, humans and mice don't age the same way. It's, it's now well established the fact that, that humans are not mice. And most of those things that I just showed you here are based on mouse studies, okay? All these things here, and I'm sure you've seen like there's Veritrol and things and other things, all these are really great for <laughs> extending the lifespan of your pet mouse, your roundworms, your fruit flies, and your yeast. But they don't have any effect on humans at all. Now there's some things, I don't know why the color's not showing up here. It's, this is supposed to be different colors. It on the computer screen, but there's this is a different color. Okay, so so here these things are all going to help your mouse, your pet mouse. These two things have some opportunities. Actually, this one too of, of actually extending lifespan of humans, but really the data is not there yet. But what I call the front runner is what I, is called telomeres, and it turns out that the reason why these ones here are possibly good too is because they actually do the same thing as what telomeres are. And so the question is, in many of your minds, come on in. Just got to the main part. What are telomeres? It's just out of curiosity, is there anybody here that doesn't know what telomeres are? Okay. And the rest of you do know. Okay, so so that, that tells me how to how to much detail to go and explain it. Anybody Anybody not know what this is right here, this picture? Okay, that's a chromosome. Okay, and so that again tells me how much detail, how much I should go into explaining the next set of signs. But in order to understand what a telomere is, well, first they're very, very small things inside of every one of you. Okay, but we've got to zoom in on a human being to see what they actually are. And the first thing we see is that we're all made up of cells. We're made up of 100 trillion cells. And most of the theories on why we age say that we age because our cells age. And so we've got to find out why the cells are aging. It doesn't really make sense. A cell divides to become two daughter cells. Why are they older than the first cell? Okay, why isn't these two new cells brand new cells? You know, just as young and healthy as they were. They're not. For some reason, when a cell divides, the new daughter cells are older than the old cell. Zooming in even further, we find that every cell contains a nucleus, and inside are found the chromosomes that I just mentioned and I showed you that in the picture. The chromosomes, what chromosomes are is where your genes are. They okay? give you your hair color, your eye color, all this kind of stuff. Okay? It affects everything about you in one way or another. And they're all located on these chromosomes. 
But if we zoom in now on one of these chromosomes, the chromosome contains this long string of beads that extends from one end all the way to the other. It's this long string of beads, and the beads are called bases. And a typical chromosome is about 100 million bases in length. And what I want you to do is I just want you to think of this as like a big shoelace. Okay, a really, really long shoelace. And you know that the tips of your shoelaces are the caps. And those caps protect your shoelaces. They keep your shoelaces from falling apart. But when they get really short, then your shoelaces start falling apart, becoming frazzled and everything like that. Well, the same thing exists on the tips of our DNA. And that's what the telomeres are. Telomeres are the caps on our DNA molecule. So think of the DNA as a shoelace. The caps on your shoelaces are equivalent to the uh, telomeres on our DNA. All right, now if we zoom in now even closer and look at one of the telomeres, we find the telomere is about 15,000 bases in length. Remember, the chromosome is 100 million bases in length, so the telomere is actually a pretty small part of it, at least when we're first conceived. And this is where all the trouble begins. As soon as your cells start to divide, you're, you're, when you're first conceived, you're a single cell. <clears throat> that cell divides, become two cells, those cells divide and become four cells, and on and on. A lot of cell division occurs before you're actually born. Okay. Every single time, the problem is, every single time the cells divide, the telomeres get a little bit shorter. And so as a result, because of all the cell division going from a single cell embryo to a newborn baby, your telomeres have shortened from 15,000 bases down to 10,000 bases. And I want to tell you, this is fact. This is not a theory anymore. Everybody, every scientist in the world believes that this is happening. But it's actually like a counting mechanism. You can see how many cell divisions have occurred just by measuring the length of this telomere. Now the problem's not over yet because this baby has to now grow up to become an adult and that's going to require a lot more cell division. And so cells are dividing and dividing and dividing. The telomeres are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And when telomeres get down to 5,000 bases, our cells lose the ability to function and we die of old age. That's now fact. We know, we know from looking at human cells growing in petri dishes, we know from looking at human cells on various tissues of the body, and looking at measuring the telomeres, that when telomeres get down to 5,000 bases, our, our bodies can no longer function and we die. We, we most of us die before then, actually. This is the only clock of aging that's ever been discovered in humans. As I said, we're conceived at 15,000 bases, we're born at 10,000 bases, and we die at age at 5,000 bases. And there's absolutely nothing we can do about this yet. No matter how we eat and exercise and everything our doctors tell us to do, we can't stop this shortening. This is causing us to age. Now, if we do the math, we know how often cells divide. We know how much telomeres get shorter on each cell division. And we know how many cell divisions you can have before you get down to 5,000 bases. If you do all the math, that says that you have a theoretical maximum lifespan of 125 years. Nobody in recorded history has ever lived beyond 125 years. And there's some evidence that some of the people that lived longer than that in pre-recorded history might have been using a different calendar. Right now, with these, what we know about telomeres, it's impossible to imagine how a human being could live longer than 125 years. And only two people have, in recorded history have ever lived to be older than 120. One died at 121, and the other one died at 122. So nobody in recorded history has actually exceeded that. But if you live the perfect lifestyle, and you have perfect genetics, and you don't stand in front of any buses or against any cliffs or things like that, you could live to be 125. None of us have the perfect genetics, and none of us live the perfect lifestyle. So it's unlikely. OK? 
that's what I'm going to be at. We have this theoretical maximum of 125 years. And since this has been discovered, which has actually only been discovered in the uh, mid-1980s, every single disease that you've ever heard of has now been connected to like, your telomeres. When telomeres get short, it causes everything. I even show something like AIDS, which you don't think of as an age-related disease, but when somebody gets infected with the virus, what that virus does is accelerate the telomere short. And so that's why you don't know you're infected for two to 10 years after you get infected because it doesn't do anything to you except cause the telomeres to get short really fast. Then when they get down to 5,000 bases, then your immune system is shut down and you can't fight you, defend yourself against any disease and you end up dying. And so that's what's happening. All these things, every single thing here is connected to the length of your telomere, even the common cold. Now it's been shown to be caused by short telomeres in part. Of course, you have to get infected with bacteria, but your immune system loses the ability to fight when the telomeres get short. So what I'm talking about affects everything. I do want to congratulate my colleagues that I worked with for many years that won a Nobel Prize in medicine for figuring all this stuff out. The telomeres shorten. This it's not a theory, as I said. They won the Nobel Prize for actually proving this. It occurs in every one of us. And they couldn't answer this question. Is the telomere shortening a result of aging, or is it a cause of aging? They didn't know how to do it. The only way to answer this question is to find out. If, let's, say, let's say the telomere shortening is the cause of aging. If so, then if we lengthen the telomeres, we should see the cells in the animals and people get younger. So, they won the Nobel Prize for figuring all this stuff out. I was, I won the award called United States Inventor of the Year, second place, for figuring out how to lengthen them so that we can answer that kind of question. And what I did is I discovered this enzyme called telomerase. Enzymes are things that perform functions inside your cells. Enzymes, this is a factory inside some of your cells. It's in fact, I'll show you in a minute. It's inside your reproductive cells. This is this factory is exists inside your cells, and what it's doing is binding to the very tip of your DNA. Here's that long shoelace. It's binding to the very tip, and it's making it longer. And that's what telomerase does. And the way I discovered it was realizing that our reproductive cells have no aging process. We we are the product of cells that came from our parents. These cells were passed on to us. We're born young, and then we pass these same cells on to our kids to produce our kids. This has been going on since the beginning of humankind. So these reproductive cells don't age. Well, we discovered that they also don't have telomeres. Their telomeres don't shorten. I said before, when our cells divide, our telomeres get short. That's true in every cell of our body except our reproductive cells. Sorry, it's not, everybody gets really upset when they hear that your telomeres get short. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a long time. He's gonna be he's got he's gonna be really enjoying the best of everything when we get done here. Okay, so so what we did is we discovered this enzyme telomerase and we you found a way to cause it to turn on in mice, engineered mice, and we saw that aging got reversed. This is the actual scientific publication. I don't want you to see it. I just want you to see that this was a peer-reviewed journal, which means the scientists published this, and before it got actually published, other scientists had to review it and verify that it was actually real. So this is the first time in the history of the planet that anybody has successfully reversed the life uh, the aging in any kind of animal. And the press releases that came out in the most prestigious scientific journal in the world called Nature News said the long range reverses the aging process. So it's the very first time, as I said, that we ever reversed aging in, in a life form. We did it in mice. What we saw is, of course, the telomeres got longer. We saw these mice were so old, they couldn't breed anymore. They couldn't remember how to go through a maze that they used to know how to go through. 
their hair was falling out, their hair was turning gray, all their organs were falling apart, they were suffering from dementia, they couldn't smell, everything got reversed. Every single thing you can imagine was reversed. It suggested that telomere, short telomeres, actually is one of the causes of dementia, things like Alzheimer's, and that lengthening them brings it back, which is saying that Alzheimer's might not be the loss of memory as much as it's the loss of access to the memory. So by lengthening them, allows us to regain access to the brain cells that our memory is stored in. So this is really exciting. What I want to do is I want to show, I don't know if you, if you know who Diane Sawyer is, but she's a famous news, uh, news reporter in the United States. But she actually interviewed one of the scientists that I was working with, Dr. Rhonda Pennell. And here's. And now, eternal youth. Is it in a cage around the corner? News tonight of a breakthrough for some pioneering mice. But we always wonder, what does a fountain of youth for rodents reveal for humans? Here's Sharon Alfonsi recording. In the movie Cocoon, it's a swimming pool that turns back the clock for a group of senior citizens. But now, researchers have found a way not just to stop, but reverse the aging process. The key is something called a telomere. We all have them. They're the tips or caps of your chromosome, seen here in yellow. This is what it looks like in a young adult. But as you grow older, the telomeres become damaged and frayed, and as they stop working, we start aging, experiencing things like hearing and memory loss. Scientists took mice who were prematurely aged, added an enzyme, and essentially turned their telomeres back on. You can see it before the enzyme, after. Their brain function improved, their fertility was restored. It was a, a remarkable uh, reversal of the aging process. Look at this picture. The mouse on the right has bad skin, gray hair, and is balding. But the one on the left had its telomeres flipped back on. And you could see that uh, essentially you now have a dark coat color, uh, that the hair uh, is restored, that the coat uh, has a nice healthy sheen to it. Even more dramatic, the change in brain size. This is before the mice had 75% of a normal brain, like a patient with severe Alzheimer's. But after the telomeres were reactivated, the brain returns to normal size. As for humans, while it is just one factor, scientists now say by looking at our blood cells and measuring those telomeres, you can get a better idea of how well you'll age. The longer the telomere, the better the chances for a more graceful aging. But as for tinkering with them and turning back our aging process, researchers say we still have a long way to go. Sharon Alfonsi, ABC News, New York. This is one of the most exciting things that has happened in medicine far as anybody can almost remember. And this is why I was honored by being invited to speak at the India Today conclave, which I spoke at yesterday. Uh, and it was very, very well received. But the mice got younger. No other theory about aging has ever been able to do that. Everybody talks about reversing aging. 